Welcome to this video on climate change and the water cycle. My name is Hermann Russenberg. My field of expertise is atmospheric remote sensing. I develop methods to measure the properties of clouds and precipitation and their interaction with atmospheric radiation. We do this work to better understand climate change and its consequences for the water cycle on Earth. In this module, we will discuss the empirical evidence of climate change, the physics of the so-called greenhouse effect, sea level rise, global ice cover, clouds and precipitation. And also, what can we expect in the future? Let's start with the record of the globally average temperature of the last 165 years, as it is measured above the land surface. In this graph, we see the so-called temperature anomaly, the deviation of the mean temperature on Earth in a given year from the mean temperature of the reference period 1961-1990. Although the graph is based on different data sets and methods, they all agree quite well. We can see that most of the time before the reference period it was cooler. But in the last decades we can see a strong increase in temperature. The temperature trend does not follow a smooth curve. Oscillations in ocean currents, variations of global air patterns, or for instance volcano eruptions, can lead to short-term variations in the temperature trend. It is important to distinguish the short term from the long term, or in other words, climate from weather. Climate is somewhat loosely defined as the average weather over a period of 30 years. When we speak of climate change, we refer to changes of the mean properties of the weather. Anthropogenic climate change refers to the impact of man induced changes. Not only the land surface air temperature has increased, warming was also observed at higher altitudes in the atmosphere, at the sea surface, and the air above the sea. And there's more. We saw an increase of the heat content of the oceans, and an increase of the water vapor in the atmosphere. The sea level has gone up, and finally, the Arctic ice content is declining in the summer. There seems to be less snow cover on the northern hemisphere, and also the glaciers are losing mass. We have seen that water vapor in the atmosphere has increased. Can we also expect changes in the amount of liquid water in the atmosphere? Has there been a change in, for instance, the amount of rainfall? On the left, we see the average change of rainfall during the last century. In the blue parts on the globe, rainfall is increasing, and the brown part is decreasing. If we now zoom in on the last 60 years, we see that these changes in rainfall are happening faster than before. Parts of the world will become wetter, and others drier. Now that we have seen the different manifestations of global warming, we can ask ourselves, what is causing it? Already at the end of the 19th century, the Swedish scientist Arrhenius hypothesized that increased concentrations of CO2 may lead to warming of the atmosphere. The physical principle is quite simple. CO2 is transparent for visible light, but absorbs infrared radiation. Solar light can pass through the atmosphere and warm the surface of the Earth. In response, the Earth emits infrared radiation. This is partly absorbed by CO2 in the atmosphere. In return, the CO2 emits radiation again, also back to the Earth, where it increases the temperature. Now, has the concentration of CO2 increased? Yes. The American scientist Keeling started the long period of CO2 observations in Hawaii which was soon followed by others elsewhere. An example of such measurements is shown here. The CO2 concentration in the atmosphere has definitely increased during the time that also global warming is measured. CO2 is not the only greenhouse gas. Other important greenhouse gases are, for instance, methane, ozone and water vapor, each with a different impact on the temperature. Now that we have seen that the recent temperature trend follows the increase of CO2, it might be tempting to simply extrapolate this correlation to make a prediction of the future temperatures. It is not that simple. For instance, if you force the temperature to increase by injecting more CO2 into the atmosphere, your system can respond with releasing more water vapor into the atmosphere. And water vapor is a strong greenhouse gas itself and will increase the warming even more. The warming has led to a response of the Earth that increases the warming even more. This is called a feedback. The climate system is very complex with many of such feedback processes. We have to understand these physical processes in the climate system before we can say something about its future development. Let's have a look at the scheme of the energy transfer in the Earth system. 
It starts with solar radiation, here called shortwave radiation, SWR, entering the atmosphere. On its way to the surface of the Earth, it is partly absorbed and scattered by clouds and tiny dust particles called aerosols. The radiation is partly reflected by the Earth, but also warms the surface and the oceans. Evaporation and convection leads to redistribution of the energy in the form of latent and sensible heat. Furthermore, the Earth emits infrared heat radiation, also referred to as long-wave radiation, LWR, into the atmosphere. This radiation is absorbed by greenhouse gases, aerosols and clouds before it escapes into space again. The processes are very complex and not fully understood yet. To get a feeling for the significance of the different components of the energy balance, we can calculate the temperature on the Earth, assuming different compositions of the atmosphere. Let us first say that there is no atmosphere. The mean temperature would be around minus 18 degrees Celsius. If we now include the greenhouse gases of today's atmosphere, it would increase to plus 24 degrees. And if you also take the clouds into account, it becomes plus 14 degrees. So while greenhouse gases are needed to keep the Earth from freezing, clouds are there to keep it comfortable. To wrap it up for this video, science has progressed significantly. Every couple of years, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, issues report on the level of scientific understanding of climate change. The latest report is from 2013. It is now clear that human activity has led to global warming due to the emission of the greenhouse gases. The role of clouds and aerosols is less understood, as is the response of the Earth system to the global warming. How much will sea level rise? What will happen with the Arctic and Antarctic ice? And how will clouds and precipitation patterns change across the globe? These questions will be addressed in the following modules of this MOOC, 